Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Super excited to have you here with us today. Sorry, it, we weren't a late start, but we were an involved start because um, isn't it wonderful trying to change um, change thumbnails? But anyway, I digress. Super excited to be here with you guys. As you know, we're going to absolutely crush it today. We're going to talk about a ton of amazing and awesome things. Um, really just talking a little bit about the housing market, kind of what's going on in the housing market, but more importantly, um, kind of how and why, you know, kind of investments around Burr, kind of, you know, how to create um, amazing experiences uh, for folks. I, I think it's, I think it's pretty amazing the stuff that I'm seeing on the regular basis when it looks like, sorry, guys, just give me one second here. There we go. Golly. Anyway. Um, but yeah, just talking about like amazing burr strategy. One of the things that I think that, and, and happy to kind of share this with you guys, um, is part of my course is taking people from regular investor to elite investor. It's making sure that you don't make the big mistakes. It's making sure that you make all of the choices that maximize returns. This is the job. This is the difference between good versus bad. Cody Christian. <laughs> What's up, guys? Good morning. Yay, crash, crash, crash. Just kidding. Yeah, actually, I would love a crash. I think you would you and I would both love a crash. Um, the crash bros are ridiculous, but uh, but yeah, it's gonna make so much money for all of us who aren't crash bros because we're actually doing something and investing money. But wanted to, you know, talking about, you know, kind of back to the main subject of, of the Burr stuff and even just regular real estate investing, a mistake that a lot of people make is that they pay retail. You're not a retail investor. And if you want to make real money, don't be a retail investor. You have to shop for quality. You have to shop for deals. But I will spend a lot of time doing those things. So for those of you who don't follow me on Lumberjack Landlord on Instagram, you should be. Because while I don't come out with really good videos and shorts like Mike, Dion, and Cody and Christian, while I don't come out with a lot of those, I do come out with stuff where I'm actually in the field showing you something that I'm doing, which is much less entertaining than the other guys I just mentioned but just as valuable because have you guys literally ever walked in to Lowe's or Home Depot or a lumber yard or an appliance shop and saved $11,000 on a $3,000 purchase? They don't make coupons for that. They just flat out don't. So one of the major mistakes that people make in real estate investing is not proper planning. Admittedly, I'm a planner. Admittedly, I can roll with the punches and I can pivot. Both of those skills are really important. On the planner side, what most people do and make mistakes is they say, I'm going to rehab this unit. And when I'm rehabbing this unit, um, this is the next thing that I need to do. No, no, that might be the next thing, but you need to be looking at the overall picture, how it all fits in. If you're doing a burr project in all likelihood, you're not going to need appliances for three or four months, right? For the most part. However, you've designed your kitchen. So don't you know what size appliances you need? Yeah, you do. I start shopping for those right then. Once a week, I actually will go in and I'll ask the local big box stores. When do you guys do your markdowns on your clearance stuff? Do you really think that I need to buy this matching kitchen package because some tenant is going to be offended that the dishwasher doesn't match the refrigerator? Are you crazy? What a waste of time. Now you can do that if you're doing a massive development, you're going to get a massive deal on a ton of appliances. But last time I checked, 95% of you aren't doing that. You guys are buying appliances for a project or you're trying to replace a thing. This is the value. I saved $11,000 
on $14,000 worth of appliances. Cost me 2,900 bucks. That's it. And you know how I did it? It was really, really strategic. I know when my big box stores around me do markdowns. So I went in and then I saw what they had. And I was like, I have a list in my phone, just a few things in notepad. Here's appliances that I need coming up. And I said to them, is that the best you can do? Yep. That's all. I just asked them, is that the best you can do? And no matter what number they gave me, it wasn't going to be good enough. So I was like, "Mm." okay. I was like, "Mm, yeah. You know, I'm a landlord and so I buy a lot of appliances and yeah, I, I, I can't do that number, but I appreciate you looking it up. I really do. If, if, uh, let me know the next time they're going to be in for markdown and I'll, I'll swing in and I'll take a look. In most cases, they have codes on when they mark down, but in other cases, they literally write out the date on the note. Not even joking. They literally write out the date on the note. And these clearance items can be perfectly fine items that people don't like when they show up. They're not always these massively damaged units ever. One of the units that I bought is a combo in wall heat and micro or stove and microwave. $3,800. Do I need one right this second? Nope. You know what it cost? I got it for 380 bucks, maybe 350. I have to look at the receipt. Cost me almost nothing. Cost me almost nothing. Guys, this is how you get from good to great and from great to elite. I understand my business. I'm an operator. I know what's going on. I know what appliances I'm going to need. But then I have the solutions that I've put in place that allow me to pay the least and get the best. And it's not luck. I know what the procedures are. I know what the processes are. I know what brands I shop for. I didn't buy a bunch of Samsungs. I bought what I use. I bought uh, one of them was a Whirlpool. One of them was a Maytag. One of them was a Frigidaire and none of them were white labeled. So this is the kind of stuff that I teach in my course. This is the kind of stuff you guys can get answers on every weekend right here in this amazing live stream. So I want to encourage you guys. This is an opportunity. Think about the margin that I just created. Now, were you ever going to spend $12,000 or $14,000 on appliances for one of your properties? Nope, probably not. Probably not. However, what if you had one project you're working on and you know you're going to do another one and you can put the thing in your garage because you can pay for it and you're buying it for 40% the value? Who cares if it sits there for six months? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And these aren't like a bunch of scratch and dents. There was literally one, kid you not, that had plastic on the outer door and it had a blue line down on each side of it. The woman returned it. And I only say the woman returned it because the rep told me that a woman returned it. The woman returned it because she's like, that blue line follows right down through. Do you know what it took? Yeah. Finger, thumb, just like this. Yep. Blue line disappeared. Literally the rep goes, huh? That was a $2,800 fridge that I paid $8.90 for. It's a counter depth fridge. Like honest to God with this stuff. So hopefully that encourages you guys. This is the way that you can make your projects elite and save money. That money that I saved is real money. I was going to have to buy those things for future projects. In fact, three of the four things I bought are going into units now. You're trying to tell me you don't have a unit with a fridge that's looking a little old, a little bit dated. Maybe you've already done a service call on it. Of course you have. Of course you have. Do you want to wait until it dies and then have to quick, quick, quick emergency this, that, and the other? Nope. If you document your units like I teach you in my course, guess what? 
you know all the appliances you already have in place. You know all the ones that you're going to need. And when something fails, you've seen you've done more than one service call on something. Guess what? Boom. That's simple. Done. I bought it. I put it in place. Now I don't have to worry about another service call. I don't have to worry about downtime for my tenants. And I just curated an even better experience for my tenants.